Hi, it's Carrie. In today's 5 Minute Friday, I'm going to show you how to do backward and forward citation chasing for an article that you've selected. Now this could be an article that you've written and that you'd like to see when people cite you. Or it may be an article that you like and find extremely relevant to your research. So this way you can see what articles this article cited and who is citing this article. We'll start in PubMed. I've already selected an article. It's fairly recent, so we will see if it has citations. And I'll just paste the article title here. Click Search, and we will see the article record. And on the right, the menu to navigate the record. And in fact, we see the Cited By and the References section. So we'll scroll down past similar articles, which is different, and we see that this article has been cited by three other articles, and we can click on any of those. And then we see the reference list, and it shows you the first five, but if you'd like to see them all, you can click on the button that says Show All 65. And these are linked, so you can get to them that way. This is really useful to see both who is citing this article and who this article cited. So that's PubMed backward and forward citation chasing. Now let's move over to Google Scholar. We will paste here and we see links to get to the article itself where again we can view the reference list but here we see cited by five. Now that number is different here because Google Scholar is a scholarly literature search engine and is likely to have more information than databases which only cover certain journals and certain coverage and aren't updated as frequently. So Google Scholar, you're almost always going to see a higher number. So you can click on any of these records to see more about those. And here's the SEED article, Evaluating the Association Between Unmet Healthcare Needs and Subsequent Clinical Outcomes, etc. Next we'll go to Scopus. Now Scopus is a subscription product and you may or may not have it through your institution. If you do have it, definitely use it. It's great. Now, I simplified the article title here because, let me show you. I pasted the article title, and if I run it, I get an error. And the reason is because, and there are parentheses in this title. So let me get rid of some of the words. Having most of the words is probably going to be sufficient for finding this record. So now we just have a straight run of words with no confusing punctuation to confuse Scopus. We'll click search, and yay, it worked this time. So we get the article. We can click on the article record. We can also go over here to the end column and see that it's been cited by three. Let's click on the record. And again, you'll notice between PubMed, Google Scholar, and Scopus, all of these numbers are different. They're all working with different sets of data. Here's the article record, and if we scroll down past the abstract, we will see the 65 references all linked. And if we scroll up, we'll see the three citing documents. And if we wanted to get these into a citation manager, we can click on that, view all three. So let's say there were 30 or 40, this would be helpful there. And that way you could see the list of the full citing references and you could export them into your citation manager. You can also see if anybody cited those, but these are too new. Now let's move over to a fairly new tool called Citation Chaser. It's here, and the one thing you're going to need is some way to identify this article, so you're probably not working with the title. Let's grab the PMID from the PubMed record. Now one thing I forgot to say about PubMed, hopefully you're going to find an article that has both cited by and references, but I have found that the data in PubMed is extremely inconsistent, and you might find either one, rarely both, but most articles are going to have either a cited by or a references list, but don't be disappointed when you don't find what you need. Here's the PMID, that's the PubMed ID, that's a unique identifier for this article, so I copied it. Now Citation Chaser has a little bit of a learning curve, so again, I just want to show you the home tab. There are instructions here. You can read them. They are extremely helpful. And we're going to go to the Article Input tab. And we're going to paste the PMID here in the PMID box. And then we'll click Load My Input Articles. And it shows me the article here. Now we could have entered multiple articles and it would have worked. 
really well. So if you are doing a systematic review and you have included articles and you'd like to citation chase them, you could do them all at once. Isn't that nice? But I'm just doing the one for now. And then up here we're going to navigate the references and the citations tab for this article. So we'll go to references first. Nothing is here. We have to click the blue button to search for all of these in lens.org. That's a scholarly publication search engine. And here is the list. Now notice it's only giving you 10 at a time, but there are more than that. There are 67. So let's show 100. And then we can download an RIS file of these articles. Now RIS is your standardized file for citation managers. So if you're using EndNote, Zotero, it should work for any of those. Even Covidence, Rayon should all be able to read an RIS file. Let's go back up to the top. We'll go to citations. We'll again click the blue button to load the articles and we see there are four citing articles. So we see them all here. You can't actually get to them here but you can download that RIS file for your citation manager. So that's four ways to do forward and backward citation chasing for one or more seed articles. We used PubMed, we used Google Scholar, we looked in Scopus, and finally we used a free tool called Citation Chaser. If you're doing this, good luck. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe.